Hello and good morning. I'm Michael and welcome to today's reflection. Our study of Colossians has ended and today starts a new series of reflections for the Liverpool Diocese on the Book of Acts, led by Bishop John for our Rule of Life Summer Reading Challenge. Acts is believed to have been written by Luke, the author of the third gospel, who we learned from Colossians was a physician, a Gentile convert to Christianity. Traditionally called the Acts of the Apostles, it could be more properly titled the Acts of the Holy Spirit, as it is the power of the Holy Spirit which resonates throughout the book. It is the fascinating account of life for those at the epicentre of that pivotal time in our history, the spreading of the Christian faith across the known world. We have to stand back in amazement at God's power as Jesus, more than 2,000 years after his death, is the best known name on earth. Our study starts at chapter 13, with today's passage being the first three verses. In the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. At this time, the city of Antioch was a thriving metropolis of ethnic diversity but the church there would have been fairly new, with a small number of leaders described as prophets and teachers. In the opening verse, there are five named. Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. Simon called Niger, which means black or dark skinned. Lucius of Cyrene, a city in North Africa. Manain, which means comforter who was brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, known for his role in the events which led to the executions of John the Baptist and Jesus. And Saul, also known as Paul, a persecutor of Christians before his conversion on the Damascus Road. Like the Twelve Disciples, a motley crew to become key figures in spreading the gospel to the Jews and Gentiles. Verse 2 tells us that this small Christian community in Antioch is trying to determine how the Holy Spirit is leading them to witness. They worship, fast and pray, and the Holy Spirit says to set apart Barnabas and Saul for the work for which they have been chosen. Do we worship, fast and pray to allow the Holy Spirit to come into our lives? I'm sure we can all tick the worship box, but fasting and praying? With fasting, we immediately think of cutting out certain food or drink. But it could include other pleasures in our lives. We could give up some TV time or read a chapter of the Bible instead of from our latest novel. And linked to freeing up time, we have more time to pray and let the Holy Spirit direct our lives. There is a verse in the book of James which is appropriate. Come close to God and he will come near to you. I know how true that is when I am preparing my reflections and prayers for Sunday worship. The passage concludes with the members of the church having fasted and prayed, laying their hands on Barnabas and Saul, and sending them off. The laying on of hands was a tangible way for all the congregation to be involved in the blessing of their friends, reassuring them of continuing support for their ministry 
as traveling evangelists. In Acts, we witness the expansion of the greatest message ever told. If it could save Saul, who was a terrorist and murderer, at the top of the Premier League of sinners, then the gospel of Jesus Christ can save anyone. This is the message which flows through the book of Acts. And now a prayer. God of grace, who called the apostles to leave their home and preach the gospel to both Jew and Gentile, give to your church today the same courage of faithfulness to tell of your love in this our generation. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us close by sharing the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for listening. Enjoy this day and have a good week. God bless.